Hey guys, welcome to Introduction to African Philosophy. So guys, in this module we are going to focus on the MCQ since our exams are going to be marked. So guys, let's begin with the questions. Let's go to question number one. Question number one. Which one of the following statements does not define communitarianism? Number one. Community life is not optional for any individual. Number two, the woman person must not live in isolation from other persons. Number three, the woman person is an individualist and must always be independent of others. Number four, the woman person is naturally oriented toward other person and must have relationship with them. So guys, the correct answer is number three. So guys, let me highlight the answer so that you can see. Here we go. So guys, let's go to question number two. The statement that best describe a moderate communitarian is the following. Number one, a person is an independent being who should not be bothered about others. Number two, a person is both communal being and an autonomous, self-determining, self-assertive being with a capacity for evaluation and choice. Number three, a person is a communal being who must always be interested in others. Number four, none of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number two. A person is both communal being and an autonomous, self-determining, self-assertive being with a capacity for evaluation and choice. Okay, okay guys, let's go to question number three. The main point of Biakolo's work categories of cross-cultural cognition and following. Number one, the five categories don't give reliable insight into the African condition. Number two, the five categories explain in precise terms who and what Africans are. Number three, the five categories are right and accurate about Europeans and wrong about African. Number four, the five categories can best explain the being of an African and European. So guys, the correct answer is number one. The five categories don't give reliable insight into the African condition. Question number four. The fact that there are four or even more trends in African philosophy is indicative of the following. Number one, the poverty of African philosophy Number two, the non-existent of African philosophy. Number three, the lack of vision of African philosophy. Number four, the diversity and richness of African philosophy. So guys, the correct answer is number four, the diversity and richness of African philosophy. Question number five. One of the main point M. Bewatch's work ethics and morality in Yoruba's culture is the following. Number one, moral obligations in African morality are social rather than individual. Number two, ethics in Africa is, is anti-humanistic. Number three, the basis of morality in Africa societies in human welfare and not yearning for reward from the divine being. Number four, Africans are religious in all things they do. So guys, the correct answer is number three. The basis of molarity in Africa societies in human welfare and not yearning for reward from divine being. Question number six. One of the contributors of postmodernism to African philosophy is number one. The idea that there is no one school of philosophy that can capture the truth once and for all. Number two, the idea that all philosophies must fall in favor of party politics. Number three, the belief that African philosophy is better than every philosophy in the world. Number four, none of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number one. The idea that there is no one school of philosophy that can capture the truth once and for all. Question number seven. According to Imbo, 
The question what is African philosophy is a complex question because, number one, we have to consider what count as philosophy in the strictest sense. Number two, we have to consider who is making the definition and for what audience. Number three, they must take into consideration one's ideological commitment. Number four, all of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number four, which is all of the above. Uh, question 8. Why is African philosophy offered at UNISA? Number 1. So that students embark on the philosophical study arising from the African experience. Number 2. So that students can be shown that African philosophy does not exist. Number 3. So that students can be taught about the scientific method. Number 4. None of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number 1. So that students embark on the philosophical study arising from the African experience. Question 9. Which is the worst reason to register for this module introduction to African philosophy? Number 1. As a foreigner, I am eager to learn the philosophies coming from the African continent. Number 2. My experience as an African automatically qualifies me as Content, competent philosopher. Number three, my Ghanaian parents encouraged me to do so. Number four, philosophy practically and systematically. Theology offers it as a course. So guys, the correct answer is number two. My experience as an African automatically qualifies me as a competent philosopher. Okay, guys, let's go to question number 10. Uh, the origin of term Africa within this module is said to have come from which of the following? Number one, the historical and cultural life of the people of the continent. Number two, the experience of climatic conditions by those who visited. Number three, Greek and Roman experiences of northern Africa and its settlement. Number four, all of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number two. The experience of climatic condition by those who visited. Question 11. Which term does not best define the Africanity of African philosophy? Number one, ethno-African. Number two, Geotemporal African, number three, Meridian African, number four, Techno African. So, guys, the correct answer is number three, Meridian African. Let's go to number 12, question number 12. Why is it important to understand the discourses on African, on Africa, and African? Number one, it can influence your beliefs on the existence of African philosophy. Number two, it shows the capacity of all that thought or procedure rationality that is only done by Western thinkers. Number three, it shows verbal interchange of ideas, conversation that is unique to an African and Meridian people. Number four, it assumes the university through the ability of Western philosophy in being able to explain the lived experience. So guys... The correct answer is number four. It assumes the university through the ability of Western philosophy in being able to explain the lived experience. Uh, let's go to question 18. Why do philosophers differ in the way in which they develop their philosophies? Number one, they differ in their ability to Ability to engage in rational thought. Number two, they differ in their field or interest and academic experience. Number three, they differ solely to their psychological inclinations. Number four, they don't differ because practically speaking, philosophy is universally. Okay, guys, the correct answer is number two. They differ in their fields 
or interest in academic experience. Okay guys, question 14. Which statement is used to describe Anglophone American philosophy according to your study guide? Number one, early philosophers of this trend were critical of the Eurocentric thought. Number two, it deals with questions regarding the dilemma of modernism. Number three, it provides a critique of Africanist discourses. Number four, propounded by philosophers from previously colonies that are French speaking. So guys, the correct answer is number one. Early philosophers of these trends were critical of the Eurocentric thought. Question 15. Which statement is used to description Francophone African philosophy in the study guide? Number one. It's influenced by the analy analytic Kali style of philosophizing. Number two, one of its discourses involved the questioning of identity. Number three, Odera Oruka and Mohobe Ramos are some of its leading figures. Number four, propounded by philosophers from previously colonies that are French speaking. So guys, the correct answer is number two. One of its discourses involved the questioning of identity. Question 16. Which trend does Kwasa Wirodi identity identify in his classification? Number one, traditional African philosophy. Number two, professional African philosophy. Number three, search African philosophy. Number four, techno African philosophy. So guys, the correct answer is number one, traditional African philosophy. Question 17. What is cosmology the study of? Number one, the various trends in metaphysical philosophy. Number two, the universe, the universe in its totality and by extension humanity's place in number three the community and their collective behavioral norms number four the ways in which Africans understand their places in the universe so guys the correct answer is number two the universe in its totality and by extension humanity's place in Question 18. The term African philosophy in African term refers to number one, the university the universality of African philosophy, number two, the particularity of African philosophy, number three, the term does not mean anything, number four, the peculiarity of African philosophy. So guys, the correct answer is number two. The particularity of African philosophy. Question 19. Which of the following statement does not define communitarianism? Number one, community life is not optional for any individual. Number two, the human person must not live in isolation from other person. Number three, the woman person is an individualist and must always be independent of others. Number four, the woman person is naturally oriented toward other person and must have relationship with them. So guys, the correct answer is number three. The woman person is in an individualist and must always be independent of others. Question 20. In this module, we argue that the controversy of the term Africa stems from the fact that, number one, Africans were colonized by non-Africans, two, Africans do not like the term, three, the term is not homegrown 
but is an imposition from outside. For the term itself is complex. So guys, the correct answer is number three. The term is not homegrown, but is an imposition from outside. Question 21. Who is the author of the struggle for reason in Africa? Number 1. Ramos. Number 2. Imbo. Number 3. Pewachi. Number 4. None of the above. So guys, the correct answer is Ramos. Question number 22. The struggle for reason in Africa, the author argues among others that Aristotle's definition of the human person seems to exclude African, Australians, and the Amer Indians. Number two, Africans are depicted as being equal to all other peoples of the world. Number three, women are affirmed as equal sex partners. Number four, reason is scarcely resources among human beings. So guys, the correct answer is number one. Aristotle's definition of the human person seems to exclude Africans, Australians, and the Ameri Indians. Question 23. The origin of the term Africa within this module is said to have come from which of the following? Number one, the, the historical and cultural life of the people of the continent. Number two, African themselves. Number three, Greek and Roman experiences of Northern Africa and its climatic conditions. Number four, none of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number three. Greek and Roman experiences of Northern Africa and its climatic conditions. Let's go to question number 24. Which term does not best describe the African of African philosophy following Oswego's argument number one techno African number two ethno African number three geotemporal and number four meridian African so guys the correct answer is number four meridian African uh, question number 25 Trends in African philosophy means the following. Number one, different goals of reaching wisdom in the life. Number two, different classifications and methods of doing African philosophy. Number three, different categories of co contemporary African philosophies and philosophers. Number four, none of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number two. Different classifications and methods of doing African philosophy. Question 26. The two classifications of African philosophy according to Waridu are number one, modern and traditional African philosophy, number two, postmodern and modern African philosophy, number three, ancient and medieval African philosophy, number four, traditional and contemporary African philosophy. So, guys, the correct answer is number four, traditional and contemporary African philosophy. Okay, guys, question number 27. Anglophone African philosophy is promoted by number one, African, Afri African American philosophers, number two, philosophers from the Anglican Church, number three, philosophers from previous English colonies, number four, philosophers from previous French colonies. So, guys, the correct answer is number three, philosophers from previous English colonies. Okay, guys, let's go to question number 28. What question is used to description Francophone African philosophy in the study? Number one, propounded by philosophers from previously English colonial lands in Africa. Number two, it's influenced by the analytical style of philosophizing. Number three, one of 
is discourses involved in questioning of identity. Number four, Odera Oruk and Mohobe Ramos are some of its leading figures. So guys, the correct answer is number three. One of its discourses involved in questioning of identity. Let's go to question number 29. Kombe and Smet make the following classification of African philosophy. Number one, fourfold classification. Number two, threefold classification. Number three, sixfold classification. Number four, none of the above. So the correct answer is number one, which is fourfold classification. Let's go to question number 30. This module is offered at UNISA, number one, yearly, number two, semester, number three, biannual, number four, none of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number two, which is semester. Question 31. In the newspaper article in Daily Monitor F, T 2009, Mazrui distinguishes between which two types of Africans? Number one, African of the blood and African of the soul. Number two, ethno-African and spatio-temporal African. Number three, fran francophone African and anglophone African. Number four, African who are literal and who are literate and those who are illiterate. So guys, the correct answer is number one, African of the blood and African of the soul. Soil. Okay, guys, let's go to question number 32. Quast Waradu, FT 19FF0, argues that African philosophy must be distinguished from traditional worldview. What are his reasons for this? Number one, African philosophy becomes more accessible, accessible to the Western and European academic study. Number two, by asserting its practice as recent, it asserts, asserts how there was no philosophizing taking place in pre-colonial African philosophy. Number three, to show the need for, for and African philosophy to be textual, best study. Number four, to emphasize that it is being produced by contemporary philosophers and is still in the making. So guys, the correct answer is number four. To emphasize that it is being produced by contemporary philosophers and is, is still in the making. Okay guys, let's go to question number 33. Uh, question number three, Sereque Beham's conception of African philosophy emphasizes which of which of the following traits? Number one, it must be written. It it must be written. It must reflect on the verities of history, but can also be written by non-Africans. Number two, a set of texts written only by African and described as a philosophically by the authors. Number three, the separation between traditional African ideas from those created within the academic setting. Number four, a focus on the creation of dialogue between Western and African ways of thinking. So guys, the correct answer is number one. It must be written, it must reflect on the verities of history but can also be written by non-Africans. Okay, let's go to question number 34. A key point of Ramos in his work, The Struggle for Reason in Africa, is that Amerindians are people who cannot reason. Number two, Europeans have distinguishable rationality. Number three, Africans are being excluded from humanity. Number four, all of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number three. Africans are being excluded from humanity.
Let's go to question 35. Why is it important to think philosophically about discourse in African philosophy? Number one, excuse me. The ideas surrounding the discipline must be reviewed for their biases and provide their valid critique. Number two, when reading the philosophy paper by prominent of the discipline, we would only read their papers without evaluating their claims. Number three, by engaging in a philosophical investigation, we will understand the specific of philosophy such as geoeth ethnic technical factors number four since philosophy literally means the love of wisdom it shows why academic choose their discipline so guys the correct answer is number one the ideas surrounding the discipline must be reviewed for their biases and provide their valid critique so guys we are nearly done now we are only left with four questions, so let's go to question number 36. African thinkers critique Eurocentrism and how it places Western civilization and at the center of knowledge production and the rest in the peripheral because, number one, it adequately places African according to their political reverencing. Number two, it ensures better understanding of the world are the most important. Number three, it assumes European understandings of the world are the most important. Number four, it places African traditional beliefs as the source of Western philosophy. So guys, the correct answer is number three. It it assumes European understandings of the world are the most important. Question number 37. Which statement best describes the key argument in the paper? Categories of Cross-Cultural Cognition and the African Condition by E. Biocolo, FT 2000. Number 1. To list the various descriptions of non-Caucasian races provided by the Western world and determine their usefulness in understanding the African. Two, to show the trend of ethno-philosophy can still be useful in understanding African philosophy even though RT may not be strictly philosophical. Number three, to identify the types of thinking as being either based on text or oral thought and examines the various ways in which philosophy thought this. Number four, to argue in favor of African philosophy that acknowledges the importance of religions, just belief on the idea from the continent. So guys, the correct answer is number one. To list the various description of non-Caucasians races provided by the Western world and determine their usefulness in understanding the African. Okay guys, let's go to question number 38. What is the best descriptor of the intrapersonal pole of the philosophy? Number one. A human person is conceived as a composite substance made up of body and soul. Number two, a person is not only related to himself and is not an isolated, individuated being. Number three, a community is made up various of isolated beings functions to ensure the belief, the benefit of the collective. Number four, the nation state is understood as being critical in understanding the function and purpose of individuality. So guys, the correct answer is number one. A human person is conceived as a composite and composite substance made up of body and soul. Okay guys, only two questions left. Let's go to question 39. 
What is Gaika's critique of Menkiti in the paper Person and Community in African Thought, FT 2000? Number one, he argues against a description of community that is all powerful and individuals run the risk of failing to achieve personhood. Number two, he argues with his understanding of community where children are not mourned for at their death as they have not achieved personhood. Number three, he disagrees with Menkitis on his view that African philosophy cannot be textually best. Number four, none of the above. So guys, the correct answer is number one. He argues against a description of community that is all powerful and individuals run the risk of failing to achieve personhood. Our last question, guys, question number 40. How does Gaek FT 2000 in, in the same paper think about individual human rights in relation to his moderate communitarianism? Number one, there is no space for human rights because the need of community surpass those of the individual. Number two, the community's cultural development and success rest on the realization of how it is important to allow for this for the exercise of individual rights. Number three, the community must be considerate to the need of individual when giving out punishment. Number four, society cannot function without the assistance of the state institution and so individuals right supersed those of the community. So guys, the correct answer is number two. The community's cultural development and success rest on the realization of how it is important to allow for the exercise of individual rights. So let me highlight the answer. Okay, guys, we are done with the questions. So, guys, this is part one. So, I'm going to be uploading part two. So, please, guys, subscribe for more. I'm also going to do the MCQ for other modules, guys, for LOB. So, please, guys, subscribe for more.